Hi, we're having a conversation with Evan Knight. He is a conservation and library student at uh, the University of Texas in Austin. And um, maybe some of our viewers have uh, antique, old, or very dear books at homes, at their homes. Um, what would be your advice for people who have antique and dear books and want to preserve it? Uh, this is a extremely can be an extremely large question. Uh, I think a good rule of thumb will be to consider where you're storing your book. I think um, a lot of times people put their books in their attics or in their basements, um, but oftentimes uh, a good rule of thumb to understand is if, the, if your attic or basement is too cold, too damp, too dark for you personally, it's probably going to be uh, an inadequate uh, storage environment for your book also. So you might consider moving it into a different part of your house, maybe something, maybe an area uh, less humid, for example, um, or uh, considering to put it maybe in some sort of protective box. Well, when you say protective box, what are you talking about? Um, a number of things, actually. Um, depending on, uh, uh, on the way you decide to protect your, your material, you can put it in a thin uh, type of what's called a wrapper, which is made out of some thin cardstock, or you could make a, a heavy uh, decorative box that's even covered in leather, so something that you'd like to uh, maybe have around in, in your library or uh, something on display also. And uh, for the regular folk, uh, what resources are there available if they want to know more about preservation of books? Um, I think the internet is probably the, your, your easiest resource. Um, there's uh, just doing Google search. Google is, is very useful in getting more information about preservation and conservation activities. Um, and there's a bunch of bibliographies online that you could search at your local library. And uh, could you recommend one? Um, sure. Um, this is an old book, but uh, Douglas Cockrell's uh, Care of Book Bindings um, is good. And I think. Um, the NEDCC is based is an institution based in Massachusetts, and they publish uh, really useful practical leaflets that that um, might be a little hard to find, but in an institution, um, if you can get your hands on it, that would be extremely useful. Now there there is the case when uh, organizations, uh, libraries, uh, schools get donations of uh, antique books. Um, what is your advice when an organization receives 200 or 75 uh, old books? Um, I think this is a, a very large question, and it, it touches on a bunch of topics in librarianship. Um, first is considering your donors and whether or not that, that uh, acquisition that, that, uh, that the donor gave is appropriate for your, for your collection. Um, after considering that it does fit, um, you need to know what you're getting, so cataloging it and making sure that your, um, uh, your patrons, the people who use your library, will be able to understand that this is a new book and that it's available to them. Uh, on the other hand, if you're unable to do that it's, and you don't know what you have or your public doesn't know what you have, it's as if you don't have the book at all. Um, another aspect related to that is being able to take care of your book adequately. Um, and preservation, which is uh, my specialty. So um, if you are unable to preserve your book, if you don't have the resources that you can dedicate to making sure your book is going to last, it might not be an appropriate acquisition for you either. You have mentioned uh, the, the book to last. Um, how much time is reasonable for a book to last? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... Uh, I think that's an interesting question. I mean, we—I think the oldest books we have are from uh, about 400 A.D. So uh, that's been more than a uh, thousand years, more than 1,500 years. So uh, ideally, as someone in my in my position, a conservator and a pre preservation uh, professional, um, I'd like something that'll last a thousand years. Or, but that's a little unrealistic. So. Um, 500 years is a decent rule of thumb uh, as conservators, or 100 years. It's very, it's very variable depending on what, you, what you'll be working with or what you'll be working on. Some materials have lives of 10 years or less. For example, tape, tape adhesive, does, is not going to last for more than 10 years. Um, 
but on the other hand, something like a high quality animal skin can last for quite a long time. So it really depends on your materials, um, but ideally, you'd like to get the best life for your material. And uh, what about uh, when, well, it's, it's easier to preserve a book that it's not uh, in use. Uh, what about if uh, you have a collection of books that are li relatively valuable and you need to use them? What is your recommendations? What are your recommendations? I think this is going to vary depending on uh, your institution as well as the material. Um, if you have something that absolutely must not be used, um, an idea that you could be that could uh, be used is to make what's called preservation surrogates, which is in the past has been with microfilm. So take copies of microfilm or also photocopies um, of that of that material, and then have that for use and have the original um, on the side. And that's been pretty common nowadays with digital technology. You just can take a picture of it of the of the information, and then keep the original to the side. Okay. Thank you, Evan, for your advices, and thank you for your attention.